Hey, it's Mo Ari. And Tiffany. And you're listening to the Hashtag Love Goals podcast. Before we get into this episode, I just want you to remember that every human, regardless of identity, needs these three things. Belonging, authenticity, and love. And after a decade of partnership, we've learned to co-create these things and so much more. So from wherever you're listening, we're going to go on a journey of becoming our own hashtag love goals. Now let's get into this episode. You are now listening to the Hashtag Love Goes Podcast with Tiffany and Mo Ari. We are so excited to have so you excited. here. I need you all on my side right now because, <laughs> oh you know, I'm, I'm going to start with a little story. So a long time ago, like we're going on a decade of knowing each other now and mm-hmm. maybe like eight or so years ago, yeah. nine, I asked Tiffany to be in a relationship with me. And her response was like, can you ask me again in the morning? Uh, And it prompted this episode idea because I really wanted to talk about like how you even have a relationship conversation Mm -hmm. uh, at any level of the relationship, how you decide, you know, to take that next step, whatever Mm -hmm. commitment looks like for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt ready, but Tiffany needed a moment. She needs to sleep on it. (laughs) And I'm just so curious if we could just go into what that, that moment in our history was, why that pause happened for you where you're like, let me ask, let me ask me again in the morning. (laughs) Um, And I'm just curious, like maybe I was wrong for asking when I did, but Mm -hmm. I'm just curious about like what your perspective is. Yeah, I do not think you were wrong for asking. I felt that I was not in a clear headspace when you asked me this question. I had just flown in from New York. I was in grad school in New York. You were in Chicago and it was that evening and I was like, Oh, this time, like in my head, this is the dialogue in my head. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. That's so nice. Like I, I hadn't seen you in a really long time. I was on the cloud. I was so excited. And I wanted to make sure it wasn't like this dispensated moment where I was just Mm. like so happy and excited and Mm. like I was going to rush into this answer because of that very moment. So I'm like, okay, let's check in again after I slept on it in the morning. And I remember waking up like, oh my God, this feels the same. I still want to be with you. Oh, wow. Okay. I can answer the question now because I feel like I'm in a grounded space. Yeah. So I don't think you were wrong for asking the question. I just knew that it wouldn't be fair or I wanted to make sure that when I answered the question, that I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew. Yeah. (laughs) And I feel like that speaks to your personality. You definitely are just very level headed like that. Yeah. um, Where you often have to think things Mm -hmm. through and I'm more impulsive where I'm like, I just know and I just go with it. And I tend to land on my feet, which is good. Right. It doesn't encourage me to stop being impulsive, though. Yeah. but so I was just very in the moment. Yeah. We had just had sex. Mm-hmm. So it was like, do you want to be <laughs> my girlfriend? Of that. Okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, I need to take a breather and make sure that, you know, I feel the same way in the morning. <laughs> um, but to your other point, like, I feel like I could err on the side of being in my head too much. So yeah. it's finding that healthy balance for me because I could be like, so much like trying to mull it over and think it over that mm-hmm. it's like, girl, just be present be yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Um, and so I do feel like in that moment, I was like, okay, yeah. I feel really present. I want to make sure this is actually the present. Yeah. Um, I didn't say like, let's talk about this in a month. I was yeah. like, okay, tomorrow I feel like yeah. I'll know I'm in the level head, yeah. the level headed space. Um, and so I was like more than excited that next morning to say, ask me again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so what... I guess, what do you say then, mm-hmm. let's say to someone who's dating, mm-hmm. who is like getting to know somebody, let's say they met on a dating app, mm. something like real modern millennial. Yeah, right. They met on a dating app or something and they're like vibing, mm-hmm. but they haven't had this conversation and they have like so much anxiety about it. Like, where mm-hmm. is it going? And I think particularly what I've experienced with um, my female identified clients, mm-hmm who are dating they often are like waiting for their often masculine partner to say something Mm -hmm. like 
to say like, hey, I'm in, you know, I want to I want to be with you. Mm -hmm. Um, What do you think? Like, should women probably make that move? Can they initiate that conversation? Mm -hmm. Like, what's your thought on that? Like, do you take a more traditional approach? Like, would you have ever asked me to be in a relationship with you? Yeah. I mean, I think that's an interesting question. Um, I think women that I was going to say women wait. Like, Mm. if you're in relationship with, like, a masculine identified person, a man, like, whatever the dynamic is, we wait, like, okay, I'm going to wait and see what they say. Like, I'm going to see how they feel. I'm going to see, like, you know, how they see the relationship going. Mm. I think that it is so counter to how women are socialized to say... I like you. Yeah. I want to be in a relationship with you. Yeah. Can we be together? Right? (laughs) In my head, I would like to think that if you hadn't asked me and that was where I wanted to be in our relationship, I would have asked. Yeah. But I I honestly can't say with 100% certainty that I Mm. would have. Um, Yeah. It's some, again, I think it's how we've been socialized to wait, you know, to like, just uh, receive, just allow. Just receive and allow. And there's so much beauty in receiving and allowing. But we also have to ask for the things we want, mm-hmm. declare the things that we want. It is mm. something that I'm actively working on every mm. single day. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a real opportunity. And I would venture to say for a mm-hmm. masculine identified person, it might be a little sexy if you mm-hmm. say like, I like you yeah. and I want to be with you. Yeah. How we make this work. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I would imagine that that could be something that yeah. is very attractive uh-uh, yeah. to the masculine identified person. Um, so to answer your question, would I have asked? Mm, yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. not. Um, but I will say that for women, it just feels so challenging um, to really lean into that vulnerability. Yeah. I think oftentimes we are seen as vulnerable and mm-hmm. like, just there waiting to receive and we kind of play into that by yeah. then being like okay well i'm yeah. gonna just wait here yeah and then we aren't really getting what we want yeah i want to be in a relationship with you i want to know where i stand i want to know do you even see this going beyond yeah. here yeah um so we are i think it's a real challenge for women to say like at least initiate the conversation right yeah mm-hmm. absolutely you have me really wondering how i would feel i'm like <laughs> It's almost like I'm curious Mm -hmm. about if in every scenario, I guess I'm wondering like if there is a moment where a woman might initiate, let's say a relationship with a Mm -hmm. man, let's just make it like a hetero relationship. Right. She might initiate a relationship conversation mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. say, like, hey, I really want to talk about, like, us being together. Like, where do you see this going? I wonder how often in culture or in that type of dynamic that that is not received well. Mm-hmm. Because what we don't, I wouldn't want anybody to be in, like, a cat and mouse dynamic oh, where right. it's, like, pursue or distance her. Yeah, right. And I just wonder if women are socialized to receive and allow, what are men socialized into? Um, and if we are going to be in a space and time where we're turning those gender roles on their head, we're picking them apart, mm-hmm. we're trying to do something different, mm-hmm. you know, what could that look like for men? Right. I think men are a little bit more, a little less flexible, a little mm-hmm. bit more cemented into these dynamics mm-hmm. because of culture. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we have a lot more restrictions yeah. on how masculinity can look. Right. And so many people feel restricted in that. Mm-hmm. So Does that feel threatening to masculinity is what Mm. I'm sitting here thinking about Mm. if someone initiates that conversation for me. Mm. Now, for me personally, no, it does not feel threatening. I do feel like I would be like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. But I wonder for the culture at large, I'm aware of how I think differently. I wonder for the culture at large if that would be a challenge. And I'm wondering Mm. if you have any insight based on like maybe what your friends have shared about dating or um, your experiences talking to other women about what the reception has been when those conversations are trying to be had? Mm. I would say that there is a challenge there. I feel like as women are socialized to receive, men are socialized to be the doers, be the people that like initiate and start these conversations and like begin start the journey, so to speak, of the relationship. Mm. And so I think it it. From experience, yeah, speaking to very close friends time and time again, 
it's not always received that well. Yeah, it um, kind of forces them into exactly. this pursuer distancer exactly. dynamic where she pursues, he distances because exactly. he's like, uh, this is supposed to be exactly. my role. I don't know what my role is now. Exactly. I don't know how to receive and allow. Exactly. I got it. Yeah. And so then this feels like it's coming to the heart of mm-hmm. like why we even have these mm-hmm. conversations mm-hmm. to talk about like being your own love goals mm-hmm. and talking about, you know, how we can co-create partnership, yeah. how we co-create right. relationship. What would it be like if both people came to the relationship mm-hmm. conversation mm-hmm. and initiated it together. Yeah. What would that even look like? I mean, I feel like the heart of communication is vulnerability. Yeah. And I feel like regardless of how we're socialized, as women, if we're socialized to receive, mm-hmm. and as men, we're socialized to do, 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 imagine what that conversation would look like. It's Let's say the woman takes the lead yeah. and it's like, I really like you. Yeah. I really like that you're so consistent in communication with me and you always follow up with plans. Yeah. And I really want to talk about like where we see this relationship going. Yeah. I took a moment. Yeah. And expressed some vulnerability there. Like, I like you. Mm -hmm. I feel like we we've been socialized like that's just a given. We've been socialized yeah. in the ways that we have. So how do we break that down? Yeah. And I think some of breaking that down is being vulnerable yeah. because we we might not as women we're yeah. also very powerful. We're mm-hmm. all powerful, right? Yeah. But even just because <clears throat> just because we receive yeah. and are uh, socialized to be the people that receive, it doesn't mean then that we don't take initiative or we can't take initiative right yeah we can say like i said i really like you how do we keep this relationship going or what does this relationship look like and that could encourage the man or the masculine person or whoever else is in the relationship to be like okay Mm -hmm. you know yeah Uh so then on the receiving end of that vulnerability that you would have offered in the relationship Mm -hmm. my job is then to be vulnerable because then it starts the process of Mm -hmm. co-creation so if I don't lean out and I don't let my wall go up like wait wait that's supposed to be me yeah you know she's taking my power away (laughs) you know beating my chest if I can like be vulnerable Mm -hmm. and actually explore my own emotions and be aware of my emotions um, then I can actually determine if I like you enough or if I like you myself enough to be in relationship with you. That's a big part, right? But that's a whole other episode. (laughs) Do I like me in relationship with you? Because I think that that's the biggest question that Mm -hmm. we face when we're determining whether we want to be with someone. Right. Do I like how I feel in this Mm. relationship? Do I like who I am in partnership with you? Right, right. Thank you for that pause. All right. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, and no, I think that is a really great point. And I think that there's so many ways that we can have this conversation. I think we have to use a bit of creativity. Yeah. Because we could just be like, can we talk? Yeah. I want to know, do you see me as your girlfriend? Do you see this going into marriage? Like, those are all important questions. They're yeah. all important things to get at. But also, we could add a little spin on it. It might be a game. It might be like 21 questions, right? Like, where do you see yourself in this many years? Or whatever the thing might be. I think really allowing ourselves to not follow a specific mold. (coughs) Sorry, I'm going to get some water. Got to hold your thought. Not following a specific mold. Yeah, I think it's really allowing ourselves to not follow a specific mold about what that conversation has to look like. Um, It can look so many different ways. It doesn't have to happen at the same exact times. But I think if there is, which probably gets at the timing of when these conversations should happen, um, when it feels like within you, there's some vulnerability you need to Mm -hmm. express or you're like, are we together? Like, yeah. do we have an anniversary date? Like, yeah. what's happening here? Then yeah. we probably should start exploring that conversation yeah. and being creative about yeah. what that conversation can look like. Now, you bring up a really great point. Yeah. You know, I'm a big supporter of having the actual anniversary. And I know, you know, I've seen a lot of different relationships mm-hmm. work very well without having yeah. that or yeah. without having these finite dates mm-hmm. or anniversaries. Mm-hmm. However... Those are very specific circumstances. A lot of times 
So unlike these other scenarios mm-hmm. I'm talking about, mm-hmm. uh, people haven't had that relationship conversation. And then that also means that they haven't done some of this other work to lay the foundation for the relationship, to talk right. about what they want to build together. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes it means that we're kind of happening along into the relationship, mm-hmm. into this parallel process, but not really together, mm-hmm. not, you know, uh, not working together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It can be like we're in two different relationships at a mm-hmm. point. Uh, if nobody's ever talked about expectations, nobody's ever talked about what being committed looks yeah. like. How do we expect monogamy if we will not ask and talk right, about that? Right, you cannot right. expect monogamy. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but then we'll be the first ones like with our feelings deeply hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think the relationship conversation feels like it goes even more beyond just mm-hmm. like, do we go together? Do it you does. like me? Check yes, it check does. no, right? Yeah. It's like, can we build something? Can we co-create something mm, together? Do we it. have the same vision? Right. Do we have the same plan? Right. That's that's exactly it. And I was going to say it allows... <clears throat> excuse me. You can start it. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. It allows the opportunity for whoever is in the relationship to create the expectations, to yeah. create the like, okay... I feel like we should have, we should talk on the phone once a day. Like we, because of the different life experiences we have, I might not assume coming into a relationship without having any sort of conversation that that's an expectation, right? So having that conversation allows the opportunity to talk about like, okay, these are my experiences. This is what I expect. You say, these are my experiences. This is what I expect. Okay, how can we work this mm-hmm. together for what feels good for both of us? Yeah. Um, so it, I agree. Like it's beyond yeah. Yeah. the anniversary date, which yeah. is important. And I yeah. am a sentimental person and love yeah. anniversaries. Yeah. And yeah. it allows for deeper conversation yeah. about co-creation, yeah. expectations, and things like that. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. then if I can be like a, if I can do like a shameless plug for anniversaries. <laughs> yeah. The reason why I feel like they're so important Mm -hmm. is because, you know, when two people come together and they are Mm co-creating something, mm -hmm. it's special. It's almost like birthing something Mm -hmm. into the world, Mm -hmm. even if it's just like that you all are coming together and this big love is about to take place between the two of you all. Mm -hmm. That's worth commemorating. Mm -hmm. Um, There are so many moments in life that are chaotic toxic challenging disruptive Mm -hmm. traumatic Mm -hmm. and then we have this opportunity to birth something beautiful Mm -hmm. into the world together Mm -hmm. we should celebrate that and i know like as black people too how often things we do go uncelebrated because we're always telling ourselves you know success is further out like Mm -hmm. when i get there i'm gonna celebrate and then we don't always get to just have joy in mm-hmm. what we have right now. Having a successful relationship as a black person, just a few generations removed mm-hmm. from slavery, is a success. Mm-hmm. It's not just how much money you make. Yeah. And so if we can like have anniversaries, <laughs> really celebrate them, mm-hmm. have relationship conversations, yeah. we're starting to build real empires. Yes. You're talking about like being kings and queens. It starts like with us really honoring the love that we have as real right. success like right. that's gold i was gonna say and that is all about being your own love goals not yeah. seeing like well this person did it like this so it has to be like right that, they like, pursue money if you decide you're gonna exactly. pursue love you're gonna get something exactly. more than money exactly exactly and it's so unique from person to person that's why it's really important to not compare yourself to the next person literally be your own love goals, whatever that looks like for you, whatever joy that will bring for you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I could just talk about that forever and <laughs> ever and ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I just feel that so much in here. And I'm grateful that you went on this little tangent with mm-hmm. me about, you know, our relationship and how that started. Cause yeah. I remember that moment being very special to me um Mm -hmm. and feeling this overwhelming kind of love Mm -hmm. in that moment Mm -hmm. and it wasn't lust and it wasn't infatuation I was clear that it was something different Mm -hmm. that was like it was a spark and even if I only got like a glimpse of it I knew that it was something that was different that was happening inside of me and I was like this 
she's the she's the person yeah even if you were the one for that moment i knew that that spark that yeah. flash of whatever i saw was like something that mm -hmm. was worth pursuing yeah um so i will say that that's how i knew i was ready to like ask you and have yeah. that conversation mm. and so that's another thing to explore when you decide to have that conversation try to make that decision because of mm -hmm. you know because you feel ready because yeah. you feel that relationship you know really uh, meets this desire that you have mm -hmm. uh, for relationship. Mm -hmm. Don't make it based on right. I need to be with right. somebody because right. that's not you know going to get you all of the things that you right. want. That's my advice. No, anyway. I, I agree. And I will also say be aware if you're running away from the conversation because mm -hmm. I think that night when you asked me that some part of me feeling I mean we had just had sex right? Yeah. But some other piece of this was now in my head, what does that mean? Yeah. Does this mean we're fully monogamous? Does this mean this? Like all of these questions mm. that we could have tackled together in, together in the conversation. Wow. <laughs> I, in that moment, was like, okay, I'm going to pause and regroup tomorrow. But I could have easily been like, uh uh, this yeah. is sticky, don't want to do with it, yeah. and ran away from the conversation or not yeah. leaned in or wasn't vulnerable about it. So I will also invite people to get comfortable with that discomfort yeah. that's coming up there because maybe you it's a moment where you're like well what does that mean yeah and you get to talk about it together that's yeah. the beauty of creating your own relationship you get to talk about it you yeah. get to um come together with your different perspectives <laughs> and understand <laughs> <laughs> what works for for one another in the relationship well i'm just happy that you said yes <laughs> fist bump on that yeah um i absolutely agree with your advice mm -hmm. so much just being able to lean in is so yeah. important mm -hmm. uh it can be scary when you see that spark Ooh. of that something new that's something different yeah. especially if you came from any kind of upbringing where Love didn't look like that. It mm -hmm. didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. You were like, this cannot be love. Yeah. And then you have this experience with this new person where you're like being held or you're having these mm -hmm. intense conversations you've never had before. Mm -hmm. You used to hate that I talk so much. You were like, you're a therapist. Yeah. That's a good and bad thing. <laughs> but we, yes. we had not had conversations yeah. like that in our families of origin. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to grad school, so I got yeah. all this cool lingo and these right. new ways of being. Right. But being in a relationship with me was challenging because then I was, you know, challenging you to have conversations conversations mm. and love in a different way yeah so it's been a process and right. i was challenging myself at right. the same time to right. rise to all these things that i now right. knew as what was you know healthy and right. good and was going to help our love right. grow right um, and i think you were also encouraging me to be present yeah if i was very honest i could have probably come to chicago had a great time enjoyed you never had had this conversation and not thought about it like in the present like, you know, like just <laughs> presently aware wow. of the subconscious, though, I feel like you were mirroring something back to me that I really d deeply desired. No, I desired I being in a relationship yeah. with you. Was I embodied in all the ways? Mm -hmm. Was I present to the fact that that yeah. was something that I wanted? Yeah. No, not so yeah. much. Um, but I think you were you invited me in to yeah. just settle in, which was that grounded piece of like. This feels good. Yeah. I want to be in this relationship. Yeah. And so I feel like a part of that leaning in was being like, okay, he ain't the only one that feels that. Like, I kind of mm -hmm. feel that too. Like, I, I definitely feel that. Yeah. Like, um, and so I think you invited me to be present to yeah. really what was all of what was happening for me. Because yeah. while I was nervous and anxious and like, what is, what is this conversation going to look like? I de I really wanted to be in a relationship with you, mm. but I wasn't presently aware of that idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's like a real challenge. Mm -hmm. um, it's being very present to it. Yeah. Uh, really leaning in mm -hmm. when love calls your name. Like, who says <laughs> that? <laughs> who, who made that song? Is that Kim? I think. Oh, yeah, we totally. <laughs> <laughs> Being really leaning in, right? Yeah. Like, what are you going to do when that moment mm -hmm. happens? I think when, when, or if you come from a background where you have not experienced that feeling mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. or you have no real precedent for what right. that feels right. like, it can feel unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. And we tend to lean out of or feel fear yes. about things that are unfamiliar. Yes. So even if we are used to toxic situations, that feels more comfortable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than having a relationship conversation mm -hmm. with somebody who is saying, actually, let's do this mm -hmm. the way that is going to get us mm -hmm. a lasting partnership. 
So even if women are coming to the table and saying, I want to talk about, you know, our relationship, it doesn't always mean it's going to be met with, yes, oh my God, because people, I mean, I think so many people have to unlearn Mm. being comfortable. Yes, absolutely. Because comfort sometimes is is... Comfort will sometimes leave us in toxic situations. Mm. I'll just leave it at that. (laughs) Um, And so we're learning this new way of being in relationship Mm -hmm. and leaning in and vulnerability. So I think those are some of the biggest topics that we cover. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'll just pause us there. Yeah. Sounds we can good. come back to this conversation. Yeah, that's a good one. We could go on and on about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been Hashtag Love Goals with Mo Ari. And Tiffany. And we will see you all again next time. Bye. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. If you want your question featured in an upcoming episode of the hashtag love goals podcast, go ahead and send your question to love goals podcast at gmail.com. Check out our website at love goals and follow us on Instagram at love goals podcast. We look forward to hearing from you soon.